I don't know. I'll go and explain what the question is saying. So what this question is asking, see, you lost $100, man, I'm telling you, poof, poof. If you don't tell me what you got you're it, doing, you got it quick. Early bird gets the worm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's what, we're, here's what the question is asking. The question is asking, please find the remaining side lengths and angles of this triangle. All right? Now, I said we can't apply Pythagorean theorem. We can't apply our regular trigonometric functions. The only thing we've learned how to apply right now, or not even how to apply it, but what we could use was the law of sine. So that's the first thing I'm going to write down there. Is that what you're going to Sorry. So law of sines, real quickly, can be writ written as a set of proportions. All right? Now, it's important, ladies and gentlemen, for us to be able to understand when we can apply the law of sines and when we can't apply the law of sines. So there's two conditions that I did not write with the law of sines that when we're going to apply the law of sines. We will apply the law of sines. If you guys want to kind of go back, close your brain, and start thinking, all right, geometry class. Where was I two years ago back in geometry? And I remember in geometry class, I had to remember angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, Side, side, angle. You guys remember those? No. Determine congruencies? No? Uh, that's, well, I'll get you caught back up, but we'll go through this. And if you guys remember, right now for today, we're just going to worry about these two cases. All right? If you remember, probably you didn't get too deep. You might not have gotten, gotten too deep into, in your geometry class of about side side angle. You just said, oh, side side angle spells a bad word, so yeah, we don't worry about it. But actually, that's going to be an ambiguous case that we're going to talk about next class period. We're actually going to get um, pretty detailed in with that process. So for right now, we're not going to worry about this. But what I want to do is take a look at my triangle. So before I even get started with law of sines, because we're going to learn some other techniques to solving triangles, let's just go and see, do I have a triangle that falls under my angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. So I look at this, and currently what I have is, if I kind of read this in like a clockwise direction, you could say I have angle to angle and then a side length, right? I'll say it again, just for one more. So I have angle to angle to side length. Very good. Yes, I'm good. So I'm, I'm good. It follows pretty much the angle, angle, side. So therefore, since, I'm up, since I have that, um, congruency, I can now apply my law of sines um, formula. So let's plug in what information we have for the law of sines. Well, we don't have sine A, we don't have A, nor do we have angle A. Right? So I can just write A over sine of A equals. We don't have B, but we have the angle B. So we could say B over the sine of 40 degrees. Then let's look at C, and for C we have the length, 20, and the sine of 105. Right? So ladies and gentlemen, when completing the law of sines, and the law, when completing the law of sines, we don't need all three of these ratios. All we need is two ratios to complete a proportion. Then once we have a proportion, we can solve from there. So since I have no information for A over sine of A, I'm just going to kind of erase it for right now. And let's just look at the proportion. B over sine of 40 equals 20 over sine of 105. So now I have a proportion, and I, I only have one missing angle, or sorry, one missing value, which is the length of B. So do you guys remember how to solve proportions that you can do? Yeah, you can cross multiply with your proportions. Didn't really like teaching it that way in Algebra 1, but um, you guys are kind of old enough, hopefully, to understand inverse operations, and you can probably get to that. So, so now what we'll do is we're just going to evaluate. All right. So you're going to have to use your calculator. Make sure that you're going to be in degree mode, and you could do the sine of 105. And we're going to round. So I have b times 0.9659. Equals the sine of 40 to times 20. 
and that's going to equal 12.8558. Then divide. So you can say divided by 0.9659. And therefore, my side length B is going to equal 13.3096. So now I can say B equals 13.3096. And by looking at what the side length of C is, does that kind of make reasonable sense what it could be? Yeah. Um, so that's going, to make a little, that's going to make sense. And obviously, um, it is, it's 40 degrees is smaller than 105 degrees, so we are going to have a smaller side length um, in there. So, okay, so that kind of makes a little bit of sense in there. Now let's go and see, what about A? Now, we said we didn't have any information for A. However, you guys notice that we do have an angle C and an angle B. Does anybody remember how would we go about finding the angle for A? What we'd have to do? Goes back to your, well, we can't remember, go back to our Pythagorean theorem, but what can we do? What was, what was there? Important part, 180 degrees are all at, or take all your angles in a triangle, add up to 180 degrees, right? So I could say A equals 180 minus 105 minus 40 degrees, right? Does that make sense? Because if you subtract those two, um, then you get that. So therefore, that's going to be 45. So you'll have um, A is going to equal. 35 degrees. Very good. So now I have A, which I still don't know, over the sine of 35 degrees. God. All right. But what can I equal that to? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you could equal it to 20 over sine of 105 degrees. And now we know what B is, right? B is now 13.39. 13.3096. So you could use either one of these ratios and set it equal to A. Because remember, all three of that, if A, if this ratio is equal to this ratio, then this ratio is equal to this ratio, right? So it doesn't matter which one you set equal to each other. I think for simplicity's sake, I'm going to set it equal to C. Again, cross multiply, you have A times sine of 105 degrees is equal to 20 times sine of 35 degrees. So what we'll do is do 20 times the sine of 35. And then what I'll do is divide that by the sine of 105. And therefore, I get A equals 11.87. Eight seven six two, and we said A was what thirty five degrees. So there you go. That's it. You guys want to try one? Okay. All right. So all we're doing is solving for A and B, and C, and, C. and 